When it comes to fat loss, most people already know that nutrition plays an important role. By manipulating energy intake from the calories we eat, we can tip energy balance to favor fat loss. But while the conversation around how to lose fat typically revolves around reducing the number of calories we consume or changing our macronutrient profiles of carbohydrates, fats, and proteins, we really limit ourselves by thinking these are the only effective ways for accelerating fat loss. When we look at the research, we find that there are other simple and very effective strategies that when combined can make a big difference in your progress. Instead of comparing different diets and their proposed advantages for fat loss, I'm going to show you how to be more strategic in your nutrition and take you through four science-backed strategies that I've applied to accelerate fat loss, and you can as well. So let's take a look at these. The first step is to limit the amount of ultra-processed foods. While unprocessed or minimally processed foods keep food close to their natural state, Ultra-processed foods go through a series of processes that add various chemicals, colorings, sweeteners, and preservatives, all designed to make these foods extremely palatable and cheap to manufacture. It's suggested that the physical properties found in ultra-processed foods send strong signals to the brain that create a high motivational state to overeat. Stefan Guillenet, a neurobiologist and author of The Hungry Brain, indicates that ultra-processed foods signal to specific parts of the brain to release dopamine, a chemical messenger involved in motivation, pleasure, and memory that drive eating behavior, or what researchers call food reward. The really big thing that the brain is looking for in food that determines how much value it places on a food and how, how much cravings it gives you, how much pleasure it gives you when you eat that food, is the concentration of calorie containing nutrients in that food. Foods then like cookies, pizza, chips, even white bread, granola bars, and processed cheese have powerful reinforcing effects that stimulate eating and food cravings even when you might already be full. And I'm sure you've all experienced this after eating, going back again and again for that one food, even though you already feel full. In line with food reward theory, obesity researcher Kevin Hall and his team completed a 2019 study looking at the impact of ultra-processed foods on body weight and energy intake. In that study, they randomly assigned 20 adults to either an unprocessed or ultra-processed diet for two weeks, after which point they switched diets. Subjects received three meals a day and could eat as much as they wanted. Both diets were matched to have the same number of calories, fats, carbohydrates, protein, sugars, and sodium. The only difference was that in the ultra-processed group, the majority of the calories came from ultra-processed foods, and in the unprocessed group, calories came from unprocessed foods. Researchers found that subjects on the ultra-processed diet ate 508 calories more per day and gained on average 2 pounds compared to subjects on the unprocessed diet, who in contrast lost 2 pounds. Since macronutrients, sugars, and sodium were the same in both diets, higher food reward was suggested to be one of the mechanisms that led people to overeat on the ultra-processed diet. So in practice, reducing the amount of these ultra-processed foods and adding more unprocessed or minimally processed foods like more fruits and vegetables, meat, seafood, milk, rice, natural yogurt, and potatoes can limit the intense food reward signals that can drive you to overeat certain foods and help keep you in that energy deficit required for fat loss. The second tip is to eat more low energy dense foods. Energy density describes how many calories there are per gram of food. With foods lower in energy density, only a small percentage of the food is made up of calories, with the larger components made up of water, fiber, and food bulk. It's theorized that the physical weight of food has a big impact on how much food we eat, and research shows that even without trying to diet, just by manipulating the energy density of foods, people can lose fat fast. To show this, Rolls and her lab published a study in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition that took 18 adults and over a two-day period fed them three meals a day and an evening snack. After standardizing breakfast and evening snacks, the authors manipulated lunch and dinner using either low, medium, or high energy dense meals. To vary the energy density of the meals, the authors changed the proportion of vegetables and pasta such that the meals lower in energy density contained more vegetables and less pasta than the higher energy dense meals. Results show that even when varying the energy density of the meals and allowing subjects to eat as much as they wanted, subjects in the low, medium, and high energy dense groups all ate the same amount of weight of food. The difference in energy density, however, differed considerably with subjects in the low energy dense group eating only 1,376 calories per day compared to 1,519 in the medium group and 1,800 calories in the high energy dense group. 
with the low energy dense group eating about 400 calories per day less than the high calorie dense group, even over a short period, this deficit would really help to enhance fat loss. So to put this into practice, simply start replacing some of the higher energy dense foods on your plate with more lower energy dense foods. For example, switching out pretzels for popcorn, fried chicken sandwich for grilled chicken and vegetables, cream soup for broth soup, granola bar for fresh fruit, and peanut butter for hummus. To help out, I provided a link below to a food energy dense chart that you can use to identify low energy dense options. The third tip is to eat more high fiber foods. Fiber is a type of carbohydrate, but unlike other carbohydrates which are broken down into sugar, fiber cannot be broken down and instead passes through the body undigested. In general, there are two types of fiber, insoluble and soluble. The research shows that when dietary fiber is increased, it can promote fat loss by helping control the amount of calories consumed. Soluble fiber, which absorbs large amounts of water and forms a gel, can help improve satiety or that feeling of fullness by slowing digestion and increasing stomach distension. The stomach has nerve sensors that communicate stomach volume to the brain, and these signals play an important role in both hunger and fullness. So as the stomach expands from the bulking or viscous properties of fiber, it communicates to the brain that you feel full. Research shows that when you intentionally combine high fiber foods with low energy dense ones, you can lose even more weight than just using each strategy independently. Because fibrous foods are naturally high in water content and less energy dense, you will more than likely achieve this effect from simply targeting high fiber foods alone. Increasing food volume using high fiber foods also has an important role to play in what is called sensory specific satiety, which is a temporary decline in the pleasure we get from eating a certain food. Nutritional scientist Dr. Barb Rolls indicates the value of increasing food volume for activating sensory specific satiety. Sensory specific satiety, we've done some studies that show, is affected more by the volume of food than by the total calories in the food. So that the bigger volume is helping to switch off your hedonic, your ple pleasure response to the foods you're eating. This all ties back into how eating more high fiber foods can keep you feeling satisfied and full for longer, reduce food reward signals, and just make it easier to stay in negative energy balance for fat loss. To put this into practice, simply start identifying foods that are higher in fiber and start incorporating these foods with and in between your meals. To help out, I've placed a link below to a list of high fiber foods that you can select from. The final tip is to increase protein intake. While most think about higher protein intakes in the context of muscle development, high protein diets where protein represents 25% or more of calories or 1.2 to 1.6 grams per kilogram are shown in the research to help with fat loss by increasing thermic effect of food. Thermic effect of food is the increase in metabolic rate following a meal and is shown to be as high as 20 to 30% with high protein diets versus 6 to 8% with carbohydrates and 2 to 3% with fats. If increasing daily protein intake can in turn increase energy expenditure through higher thermic effect of food, there is potential for the strategy to help us with fat loss. Research has demonstrated that increasing protein intake from 15 to 30% of total daily calories can raise body temperature for as long as four to five hours post meal, enough to burn an additional 30 calories after eating and as much as 90 calories extra per day. Over a week period, this additional energy expenditure can certainly help with creating an energy deficit and when combined with our other strategies, can really help to propel fat loss efforts. To put this into practice, take your body weight and multiply it by a figure between 1.2 and 1.6, or take your total calories from protein and divide it by your total calorie intake to understand if your protein sits at 25% or more of your calories. If you're already in a hypocaloric state or energy deficit, it's probably wise to increase your protein intake to 2.2 grams per kilogram of body weight to preserve lean muscle. So to quickly summarize the strategies we reviewed in this video and ensure that we put this theory into action, you're going to gradually reduce the amount of ultra processed foods to limit those high food reward signals and focus more on eating unprocessed and minimally processed foods. Within each meal and between meals, look to select and replace some of the high calorie dense foods with low calorie dense options. A lot of these low calorie dense options will naturally be high in fiber. So eat more of these fibrous foods, which will reduce your caloric intake, but still keep you satiated. Finally, increase your daily protein to 25% of your total calories or more, depending if you're already in a caloric deficit. This will help boost your thermic effect of food and help you burn additional calories. 
And that's it. I hope you enjoyed today's video. And most importantly, you can use this information to help you in your own fitness journey. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next video.